have heard you know, the water is going to rise because the glaciers are melting. Yes. So I always thought this would be gradual, but now I'm wondering, will the land stop to diminish when a storm comes and the water just doesn't recede? Well, the water will tend to recede. Uh, uh, not as much, will it not go back? Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a few minutes, okay? Uh, if you have no power, you might ask yourself, well, you know, what does that mean? Here are the list of things that, uh, if you have no power, Kevin you want will take down lines, and you have no lights, air conditioning, refrigeration, cooking, fans, television, radios, stoplights, gasoline, computers, clocks. All these things depend upon those power lines all the way down. So one of the greatest challenges, and you may notice sometimes uh, when there's a hurricane forecast to go into Louisiana or something, you go on the highways and you'll see hundreds of, of uh, telephone company trucks heading down that way because they're going to try and put the, the it's enormous job every time putting all these wires back to get people uh, going. So the second thing is the heavy rain and flooding. And most of that, I could want to get a lot of coastal uh, surges, which we'll talk about in a moment, but you get a little bit of heavy rain once the storm moves inland. This is a poor person on top of his, his house. So we can get rainfall up to one or two inches per hour. That's 20 inches, 25 inches in a day. Think about that, that's, that's much, that much rainfall. It's a lot of rainfall. And that rainfall has to go somewhere. And of course it will flow down hills into the rivers. And uh, so the place, uh, most of the river valleys uh, where this, where the slow moving, much weaker storm moves tend to be flooded. Uh, they clog the sewers and the drainage. That's one of the great problems that occurs in Atlanta, by the way. Our sewer system is very old. Our storm um, uh, flood water system is very old. And you tend to get lots and lots of floods. Yes? On the bottom of those flood damage not covered by homeowner insurance? Uh, you have to be very careful with that. Now, it's very hard to get um, uh, hurricane insurance in Florida, for example. Companies won't give it anymore. Um, I remember that the coastal regions uh, are the most vulnerable regions. They're the regions where you get the storm surges, which we'll talk about in a moment. And uh, I'll show you some of the, the damage which occurs with the storm surge. They cause the greatest damage. These cause the most deaths uh, in terms of... So, yes? I quite don't understand how flood gets as high as it is. Because when it starts when you flood a place, wouldn't it spread out so much in such a large area of land that is good to Good question. Let's assume that you live in a hilly region and everywhere you had 12 inches of rain. So what happens? All the rain forming, uh, uh, falling on the top of the mountains, where does that go? Into yeah. the valleys. So all of a sudden, you have twice the rain, uh, twice the water in the valleys, and the, and the and the hills remain quite dry, or the water runs off. So all of a sudden, you have to get rid of all that water, it flows down the valleys towards the sea, all at flood. That's the problem that you have. It takes a long time also for water to discharge itself to the sea. This is an example here of Hurricane Frederick back in 1979. It went into Louisiana, and this is all the rainfall it caused over the next five days. And uh, this was, this is about five or six inches of rain everywhere. So all those valleys along there were completely flooded out. So that's the problem that we have with hurricanes. This is two storms here. You see Florida here. This is all the flooding. The other thing too, when you have, to answer your question again, here Florida's flat as a tack. And so you dump an enormous amount of water uh, on, on into Florida, and uh, it takes a long, long time for the water to run away. If it runs down a valley, it'll run away quicker. And you can see even up here, there are three plus inches of rain falling all the way in Massachusetts from that same storm. This is just one more, two more flooding caused by uh, Isabel and uh, Hurricane Fran in different regions. So once the hurricane reaches the coast, you can't forget about it. This is, uh, where do you think that might be? I can see a clue there. Zoom. 
What, what flag is that? French. Ah, but Arrogance in France, that can't be right. Yes. No. <laughs> Canada is Quebec. Yeah. So this is flooding now 2,000 miles away from where the storm hit land. And look at the flooding. Enormous. That's where most people are killed because of trying to drive cars or bridges being washed away and so on. This is also, you can see the damage caused by flooding. There's a train which has been derailed here. And the, all of these um, uh, big power lines tend to become unstable. Their foundations washed away. And remember, everybody's house will be full up of water. And you, it takes a long, long time to get rid of the water. Now the storm surge. This is the result, not of wind, but of water rushing into land. And I'll tell you now how that happens. If you have, this is Georgia, and this is a tropical storm, and it's moving along this arrow here. This is the offshore winds, and these are the onshore winds. This is the northeast quadrant I mentioned before. So what do you think is going to happen? What are those winds going to do? Yeah, anybody know? Yes, they're going to collide with the coast, but they're running over the water. Yes. That's right, they're going to bring all the water in from the, from the ocean. I have a picture of that here. This is what, here's the storm coming this way, and this is the continental shelf. It gets shallow as you move towards the land. And this is the ocean, lots of waves, and this, the, the, the winds push this water inland, and you get this big surge. You see here, normally the coastline might be here, but now the water goes a lot higher. What is the difference between storm surge and a tsunami? Ah, a tsunami normally is caused by, a storm surge is caused by the wind, for example, pushing water over land. A tsunami is caused by uh, normally a sub-ocean a sub earthquake, a sudden collapse of the, of the ocean, and it sets off a great big um, wave, if you'd like, which is hardly noticed way out to sea, but as it gets closer and closer, it builds up to enormous depth. So one is geological, and this is caused by, by weather, so to speak. This is a picture of the Katrina storm surge, taken by some very brave person. <laughs> this normally would be dry. And you can see here the uh, tanks, or natural gas tanks, they're getting washed away by this. Now just to give you an idea, don't worry much too much about, this is New Orleans, and this is the Louisiana coast. The storm came right up through here. These bars indicate how much of the storm surge was. Here, it's, that's 30 feet. 30 feet, this room is probably uh, 15 feet. Twice the height of that black ceiling is the depth of water which washed all across the shore. <coughs> so uh, this is substantial. This is satellite pictures of what the Louisiana coast looked like before, after the storm surge enormous amount of water and enormous amount of damage. This is what the storm surge did in different parts of Louisiana. And there's nothing can stand the, the strong winds and the waves. Because on top of this surge of water, this 30 feet water, are big waves as well. It also knocks down bridges. This is a, looks like dominoes have all fallen down. So storm surges are very, very deadly. The question you might ask yourself, which I'm going to ask you later on, ask you later on, is, is there anything we could possibly do about it? Yes? 